We're becoming increasingly urbanized. We cross the threshold where more people live in cities than outside of cities globally, and that's expected to increase pretty drastically. So as a species, people are becoming more and more separated from nature. And we spend more and more of our time in cities, urban environments, and about 90% of our time is typically spent inside in the US. So this relationship that we have with nature is becoming uh, lost. Um, it's becoming more divided. Uh, we tend to think of nature as something that we visit at the weekend versus being a part of our everyday life in the cities and buildings that we spend all our time in. The biophilic design takes the concept of biophilia, this concept of love of life, and applies it to the built environment and specifically looks at the relationship between people and nature in our buildings and in our cities and communities. At ILFI, we decided to make biophilic design a core strategy for us because we realized that if we want to create a world full of living buildings and living communities. We need to transform the relationship that we currently have where people dominate nature to be one where people and nature really coexist together and people understand that we are part of nature and our buildings could really be designed with that in mind. One of the best examples of how biophilic design is demonstrated as this cultural connection is the Tuhoi project in New Zealand. What the cultural center that they built has done is show the Tuhoi people that their culture is vibrant, uh, can be celebrated, and that there is a pride that can then be taken up by every Tuhoi person about who they are and their relationship to the land. The building, the living building for the Tuhoi people is really a vessel to uh, represent that celebration and restoration of a, of a culture and its vibrancy, and in turn bring hope to each person within that community. That building in particular is an incredible example of how culture can drive um, a building and how in turn a biophilic building can really have influence over the culture it's within. What we saw within our living building challenge teams is a fundamental uh, misunderstanding of what biophilic design was. It was viewed within the Living Building Challenge as something that was easy to achieve, that perhaps designers and architects felt they already did because they brought in natural light or materials into their building. And fundamentally, biophilic design is about so much more than that, or about bringing in green plants or green walls or water features. It's about a deep connection between people, place, climate, and culture. the Birchie School, they took a really different approach to biophilic design by celebrating, for example, how the rain comes through the space in the runnel that is glazed and kids can see the rain, all the way through to the green wall, which in their case is used to really help kids understand how wastewater can be used to create nutrients for plants. I think at the Birchie School it's a much more hands-on educational interpretation of engaging kids with nature and engaging kids with the weather and the climate than we see in some other buildings and that's you know a fantastic response for kids so that they can really feel part of understanding their relationship to nature. The Bullet Center is really pretty remarkable. It's hard to understand until you visit it exactly why it's as remarkable as it is. It's like this, as Dennis Hayes would say, a tree popping up in the middle of a reasonably bleak, concrete, urban environment that demonstrates not only what buildings could be, but also what an architecture for Seattle and for this place and climate should really look like. 
So I think what the Bullet Center has done for, for us um, as an organization has allowed us to have different types of creative spaces so that we can hopefully meet different personality needs, different types of work as your work changes from being quiet to collaborative. That's a pretty unique approach for an urban building, and I think the Bullet Center for that reason sets an example of the types of projects and buildings that we should be creating in our cities that can allow both us to be connected to nature, but also us to be connected to each other. Specifically, we struggle to create buildings that connect people to nature in the urban environment. Often our urban environments are full of noise and uh, buildings tend to face inwards and almost be a shelter from that. I think uh, there's a huge potential for us to create cities that are like ecosystems, bring real wildness back into cities that can allow every single person in any dense urban environment to have a relationship with nature.